Hello everyone, today we continue learning Python and today I'll show you how to use monkey patching and what is it for. So let's start. But before we start that video, I recommend you subscribing to my Telegram channel. You will find lots of materials, modules, libraries, examples and tasks on Python in my Telegram channel. Also, I put all the announcements there. So if you want to understand what will happen to the channel in the near future, you can go here. And I respond to comments much faster than I do it on YouTube. So subscribe to my Telegram channel, link in the description down below. First of all, that video idea came up to me because I saw that monkey image on the internet. I really liked it, so I need to put it on my screen. Okay, now what is monkey patching? Monkey patching, it's a special construction in dynamic programming languages that helps you to assign different attributes, methods, classes to different values. That's kind of it. Now. I'll show you how to use monkey patching and you'll understand what it's for. Because many programmers use monkey patching all over, the, all over the place but don't really understand why do we need it and what is it for again. Imagine that you have a function define foo. And by the way, a little reminder that you should not really use monkey patching if you can. So for example, if you can rewrite the class or if you can update some methods, it's better for you to do that update procedure because monkey patching it's it's not a universal solution. It's just a solution for for things I'll talk about later, okay? So for example, we have function foo that returns one. And then we have code print um, foo equals equals one. That print line should always return true. And in our case, it will return, um, sorry, it will return true. I need to call that main.py file. I ran the wrong one. So as you can see, true. Because 1 equals equals 1, everything is normal right here. So imagine that that is your Python, your user authentication, for example. So your user logs in and that function foo equals equals 1 should return true. Okay. And at some point of code, we have that line. Print foo equals equals 10. What should you do? Both of these lines should give true. If I will change foo return to 10, then one line will give us false and our user will not be able to log in, for example. If I will change it to be one, then the second line will give us false. But I need both lines to be true. So what I can do? Python is a dynamic programming language. And when it comes to functions, every function is an object. So full function is an object, lambda functions are object, everything in Python is an object because Python uses Python is an object oriented programming language. And we can change the values, or is better to say links, of an object in Python. So as you can see, we have variable a, which is equals to 10, which equals to 10. But then we can change that variable to be 20, for example. So we reassigned the value, or again, it's better to say link because we use links in Python, and we changed 10 to 12, to 20. But now what we can do? We can reassign the value of the function foo. So foo equals lambda. Lambda is uh, an anonymous function in Python. So lambda, then semicolon, and for example, 10. So what are we doing right here? If you don't understand lambdas, then you can do something like that. So define, define foo2 and return 10. So these are two lines. Um, these two lines are equal to lambda semicolon 10. So lambda is a function that returns um, returns a result, and in our case, the result is always 10. So if I will call foo, it will return 10. So again, these two lines are equal to that line. But I will remove foo because it's a little bit messy. And as you can see, what I'm doing right here, foo equals lambda semicolon 10. And what's an error? Do not assign, yes, again, we don't really use anonymous function in Python, but for that, we can use them, but it's not recommended because anonymous function don't have a name and it will be much more harder for you to use tests, to use debug, and to work with them. But in our case, I will just use lambda function. So again, our foo function after the ninth line returns 10. And what will happen? When I run my code, as you can see, both uh, foo equals equals 1 and foo equals equals 10 give me true. Because we used monkey patch right here. So that is monkey patch. What we did here, we get, we got the function foo, and we reassigned its value or its code and 
now our function foo returns 10. Actually, that's it. And why do we use it? Imagine that you have, and by the way, if you can rewrite your code, so for example, um, is second foo, is sec, uh, okay, is sec if, and we can write something like that, uh, return one if is sec or 10, for example, and in sec, is sec by default is uh, true, for example, is sec, and then here is sec false. So in our case, as you can see, I rewrote the function and I can remove foo from here. What I did here, I added an argument. We can add it, we can rename it to be a, for example, because um, a else 10. So I added an argument, which is true by default. And as you can see, when I just go foo the first time, foo a is true, one if a, so a is true, and we return one, that will give us true. And then when I need to call the foo the second time, what I do, I just give false argument inside of that function and foo from false equals equals 10, that gives us um, if a, so a is false, else 10. And in our case, we receive both true statements in our code. And again, it's better to rewrite the function, rewrite the module or the class if you can, because monkey patching, it's not the best solution possible. So yeah, if you can, you should rewrite your code. But what if you cannot write your code? So in our case, um, like that and return 10 or return one, for example. And imagine that we are using tests in Python. So we'd use unit tests. And function foo is a function that uses API to return some results. So one time you called that API and that function took from uh, import time and that function took 30 seconds to execute. You don't need to wait 30 seconds for your test to be executed because these are tests. They are made to be quick because you don't need to test your code by your hands. You just can run unit tests and they will test it for you. So what I'm doing here, I import time and then in function foo I sleep for 30 seconds and only after that I return one. So again, imagine that foo function connects to a web server, to an API, uh, or gets some data, so retrieves some data from any source. And that function execution um, takes 30 seconds. And it's bad for our tests because we can, we can give any results to our test function. For example, we can give one, we can give 10. So our test will execute anyways after these 30 seconds, but we, do, we don't really want to wait for 30 seconds. And what we can do in that case? Well, we can reassign our function to another function. So for example, define foo test and foo test, it's a function that just will return one, for example, return one. And then when I'm using tests, so for example, I can make mm, debug equals true. So debug function or debug mm, variable in Python, that is true. And if debug variable is true, then we use foo tests. If debug variable is false, then we use normal foo. So that means that our code is in production and we need to retrieve the real data from an API, web server, or whatever. If mm, I make two functions, foo and um, time sleep, uh, my function foo sleeps for 30 seconds. That is an emulation of long blocking uh, function call. And then we return one, so some data from an API. Then we have foo test function. Foo test function, it's a function for our tests. So when I run my tests, I can give um, some test data, test data to our code because I don't need to run real executions. And if the bug is true, then what we can do is foo or if the bug, if the bug, then foo equals, um, foo equals test, foo test, like that. And as you can see, when I use, um, when I reassign the values of my functions, I don't need to use parentheses because parentheses is when you call func the function for the result. But when you need to reassign one function to another, you just need to provide the name. So your Python code will understand what function you want to change. Okay, so foo equals foo test, if the bug. Um, foo, oh yeah, because we don't use foo above that code. But okay, so as you can see, the foo equals foo test. If I run my code now and the bug is true, Let's run. As you can see, we get the result almost instantly. You don't need to look at true false. Just imagine that these are tests. 
But if I want to put my code into production, what I can use or what I can do is use the bug as false. And then when I run my code, let's run, as you can see, we use the real API. So we can write print real data. Let's rerun our code. And as you can see, we use real data. Let's change it to be five, for example. So for five seconds, we get real data if our debug is false. So that is monkey patching. Again, we change the value of a function if we if we need to. In our case, I don't want to wait for 30 seconds or for five seconds um, to execute my tests. And I can use debug as true. And then if debug, so debug is true, for equals full tests. And we receive our results almost instantly because I don't need to connect to API or to run some serious executions. That's it. Now let's talk about other other methods of monkey patching in Python. For example, you make a program for five year olds and you need to explain what is P. So P 3.14. And in Python, if we have P from math, so import math and then print math.p. Let's run it. As you can see, that's a very big number. And five year five year olds don't understand these numbers because they only know about 3.14. But what we can do? We can use something like that. Mm, let's call real value equals math.py. I will talk about that a bit a little bit later. And then here we have our code for five year olds. So for example, uh, math.py equals 3.14. So I reassigned the value of a variable. That is also monkey patching. Then what I'm doing? Print hello five uh, five volts. Let's write like that. And then five volts. I'll put a comma right here and math.py because I don't want to make the video longer. Okay. Hello five volts math.py like that. And why I created real value? Because after you've done some code with monkey patching, you need to return your code to its normal state. And in our case, normal state of mm, math py pi uh, constant is real value because I saved it before I started my monkey patching. And what I can do math.py equals real value and then print hello um, 25 volts math py. So I did monkey patching two times. At first I did it when I need to when I needed to execute my program for five year olds. So I changed math py to 3.14 and before that I saved my initial mathpy value to real value variable and after I done my code with monkey patching so I changed everything I go the results or something in our case I just printed hello five year olds mathpy what I need to do is return my code to its normal state and because of that I use mathpy as real value and I write hello 25 year olds math.py let's run our code and as you can see, hello 5 volts, 3.14. Hello 25 volts, 3. Point and um, that number. So as you can see, I'm not 25 year old yet. And that's it. That's that is another instance of monkey patching in Python. So again, monkey patching is when you dynamically reassign attributes, classes, functions, and so on. Now let's talk about classes. So that is an example with variables, and when it comes to classes. So class, or let's talk about, yeah, let's talk about classes. So class, um, I don't know, foo, for example, class foo, define get, like that, return one. And we have define put, print one, for example, uh, or define put, let's get value. So I'll show you a little bit more. And as you can see, we have class foo. That class foo works with, work with some big data. So for example, we have 1 million attributes inside of that class, 1 million array inside of that class. And um, what I can do is again, I can import time and then in get, uh, we need to return like get the whole variable. And because of that, I need to use sleep or time dot sleep for 10 seconds, for example. And then input, I need to return or print that variable in my buffer. And because of that, what I can do in my CD out. And because of that, what I can do is Again, use time sleep for 10 seconds. So our quest foo is a quest for our mm, for a big data. Okay. 
But what if you want to use that quest on a small amounts of data? What you can do? Well, actually, you can do something like that. Quest full for small. And then we should um, use get function return, uh, for example, small data as a string and then define put self value and time uh, or let's just print our value like that. So what I did here, I created two almost equal classes, but class foo works with big data. Class foo for small work with, works with small amounts of data. And what I want to do here, uh, for now I'll just copy my class and I'll remove it from my code. And then let's write some simple code with that foo. So for example, foo.get, um, or let's create that object foo equals foo, foo.get, then print, um, let's print foo.get again for i in range 10, foo.get, for example, or in range 3. So I'll, I just write that code that works with that class. And then let's print foo, or let's just foo.put, because we use print inside of that put. Put for um, hello, for example, like that. So as you can see, I use my foo class, I create an object, then I use foo get, I use foo get three more times, and I use foo put to uh, receive hello. When I run my code, that will happen. No, 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 no. So as you can see, we sleep for 10 seconds every time we call our uh, full get. In our case, I will sleep for 40 seconds. 10, 10, 10, 10, and 10. 10, 10, 10, 10, and 10 for 50 seconds. So almost for a minute. And I don't want to wait for that result. So imagine that that code, full class, is optimized for big amounts of data. But then a client wants you to work with a simple array which has three elements inside of it. So three elements is not a big data at all. And we don't really need to use class foo, so get some mathematical equations, get some vectors and so on. So we don't need to use class, which is optimized for big amounts of data. And because of that, what we can do? We can use foo for small. So I copy that class and I paste it right here. And then what I'm doing, you can do that foo equals foo for small. As you can see, I changed my class foo to foo for small. When I run my code, as you can see, small data, small data, small data, hello. We received our, our result almost instantly because foo for small is a class that is optimized for small amounts of data. And as you can see, when we work with small amounts of data, what I can do is I can get all the functions, all the variables from foo, optimize them for small amounts of data, and then just reassign my foo class to foo for small class. That is monkey patching. But again, if you can write another class, so for example, if you can write foo for small without monkey patching, it will be better for you and for your code. Because monkey patching, it's not the best, not the best solution possible. And you always need to think how you can remove monkey patching from your code. Of course, if you can. And yeah, that is monkey patching. I hope you, you like that video. I hope you like that image that was in the on my screen for the whole video. And that is monkey patching. Monkey patching is very useful construction and a lot of programmers don't really know about it. So I think you like that video. Subscribe to my channel, subscribe to my GitHub and to my Telegram channel. And good luck.